Now that I got your attention, here's my story. Whoever say lottery, winning the lottery is not a good thing. It depends on how you look at it. Because if it wasn't for the lottery, I would not be here right now. My mother, she won the lottery. The lottery to work in America for some people. And that's how she came to America as a worker, cleaning houses, white people house. And then she was able to get her kids here. So I was excited to come to America because when you're on a little island and the people come to the island, come back to the island from wherever they came from, United States, England, whatever, they always smell so good, they look so good. I thought money was growing on trees in America. Yes, I'm an immigrant. So my mom, she worked hard and she got us all here. I was happy to come to America. The hustle and bustles of New York, the crowd, everything, the plane ride, it was just so scary seeing so many people at once. But I had hope. Something about New York just give you that hopeful feeling. You just feel it in your blood. It's just like, hey, opportunity. You can sense it, smell it, taste it. You know you're going to be somebody when you land in New York. I was happy to see my mom and everything, but things didn't turn out the way we planned, the way we want. Things always happen. I'm not going to elaborate too much on that. I'd always wanted to become a citizen of the United States of America. I don't know the story behind why my mother didn't file for all her kids. I don't know. I have no I don't know why she'd never really say. But as I got older, become a teenager and and I was trying, I made various mistakes in my life, and I attempt in New York to get my citizenship, but it was denied. Denied several times. So many times it was discouraging. But I'm not the type of child or person that get discouraged so easily that I'm going to give up. Yeah, I'm disappointed. I come back again when the money, I save up my money, apply again, they turn me down. I kept my green card, because that's what you have, like a green card. So I had permanent residency, but I wanted to be a United States citizen. It become more of a problem to me and more of a hesitation, a rush to become a United States citizen because when Bush was in term, he was talking about the immigrants and sending them back home and I don't have a home to go to. So I know that if they send me back, I would be on the street, I probably would be dead. And so, right around the time, I think Bush was leaving, and they were rallying for a new president, President Obama. He was going to be the new black. He was going to do a lot of things for black people. That's what we thought. You know, because you, you see a black face, you want to support them and everything. And so 
When I was at work that day, everybody, it was time to vote for him. Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. That's the only story. And I don't talk about politics at work. I don't talk about it, period, because, you know, people get heated up. Things I don't talk about, football, game, and politics. I don't, I don't talk about that. But anyway, they were just, oh, did you vote yet? Did you vote yet? Patrice, did you vote? And I said, yes. Remember, I told you I couldn't vote because they had turned me down. You have to be a citizen of the United States to vote. But I was too ashamed. I was ashamed to tell those nurses that I was turned down. It's been like over 20 years, 20, trying to become a United States citizen. I tried every time I got denied. And, I, and each time they deny you, you have to pay that fee to start over and over and over. Now I was in Atlanta working and working with the nurses and they were saying, oh, I didn't vote. And that night when it was time to for everybody, I was watching the news and I was like, hey, we're going to have a black president and this. And I was on the phone calling them. Did you vote? Did you vote? No, no, well, I didn't vote. But I was just asking, go out, do it for me, please. Go out, you know, um, we're so excited. My friend called, but geez, did you do it? And I said, yeah, I did it. He's going to be the president. We're going to have a black president. I was so happy for him. And I couldn't wait that night. I just went to bed feeling comfortable, feeling confident that he was going to become the president. And when I wake up in the morning, I found out, yes, Obama was the president. I thought about it again because I was being, when Bush was talking about the immigrant, I had applied for a lot of jobs and I was being turned down. And I was now in Georgia. So I had to, in order to feed my family here, I would have to, I would drive back to Philadelphia. And since they know me in Philadelphia, I would work there, gather up my money so I could pay my bills here. It was stressful, but it had to be done. Cause you know, they would check your records here. They'll check your credits here in Georgia. They were strict. I don't know around the time while I was in Philadelphia, it was the 9-11 incident, um, the attack on the World Trade Center. And I think that day I had drove home that night in the morning. I was kind of sleepy. I heard this big noise and it was a long ride home because everybody was driving so slow. And it wasn't until I did not have a, I don't think I had a radio in my car, so I don't think I know exactly what was going on until the line had stopped and I got out the car and I asked this man, what's going on? And he told me that the attack on the World, World Trade Center, and that's how I learned about a call, make sure everybody was fine. But after 9-11, everything just went downhill. For everybody, jobs were slow. They were just scrutinized. Everybody filed. That's how I personally feel. But I decided again because of that, I was going to um, try again one last time to become a United States citizen. And I took whatever advice they had said and I mailed it in. And I didn't hear anything, so I kind of just gave up and said, let me renew my green card because it was getting ready to expire. And I renew my green card. I had to go to changes there too. I had to send back for some records back home. I finally got a counselor in, in I think in Georgia, yes. And I, I got my green card up to date and I got a new 
passport for that country that I was born in. So I continued to do my life and I work as a nurse and one night I came home, I was 3 to 11, I came home and I picked up the mail and I got all these, you know, these silly mails that you get that you just throw away these trash. Some people look at the sales page and I was going to throw it away like I always do and inside an envelope fell out. And I bent down and I picked it up and I looked at it and it says immigration. And I said, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm a citizen. I'm going, I am going to get a government job. I'm a citizen. I am free. I was so happy. I got on that phone. Mama, wake up, mama. She said, girl, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Go to sleep. I can't, mama. I got it. They gave me an appointment to come in. This is it, mama. I'm going to be a citizen of the United States of America. Woo! Thank you, Lord. You were looking out for me. Woo, 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 woo. I went so far. Girl, you don't know things I do to get this right. I went to a reader. They couldn't help me get that citizenship. I went to the Chinese doctor, Feng Shui, do all those things, voodoo, whatever, to get this citizenship. I didn't get it. I was torn. I was determined to become. Woo! I'm happy. <laughs> oh, Lord. I got it. I got it. So when I went that day, I said, Tim, nobody's going to school. We're going to celebrate. I went there. I was in the parking lot in Atlanta, government building. Oh, I was so happy. I was the first one there. Nobody was there. I sit and wait till my nine o'clock appointment. When they call my name, they say, go there. You are being sworn in tonight, today. Oh, Jesus. There is one in heaven looking over for me. Thank you, God. I was so happy that day. I was so happy. I said I could vote. I could vote. So my voice is going to be heard. Thank you. So I vote. It was towards the second term I was able to vote. And yes, I vote for President Obama. I'm not going to go into it, but I was quite disappointed, like everybody else. <clears throat> now, being an immigrant, hearing a lot of talks about we come here not to do anything, we're not educated, we're nothing, we don't, but there's a lot of immigrant that builds this country. There's a lot of immigrant that's doing good things. The reason why I'm telling you this story is because I want you to think, don't give up on your dream. I don't want you to give up. When you find there's roadblocks, I need you to find a way to get over it. And you can. It's going to be hard. Some days, at that point, that one goal, that one mistake, and I find out years after, and I'm going to make another video, the mistake that I made, that cost me waiting so long to become a United States citizen. And I'm glad that I was able to handle the situation. I'm glad that I was able, that I did not give up. That I kept pushing. That I kept trying. 
that I take a break and I keep at it. And each time I felt like giving up, I move forward. So I don't want you to feel that you should give up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because there's hope. There's hope. If I can break the barriers, you can too. I am Patrice Foster, and this is my truth. Thank you, and have a good day.